Hey everybody, it's your boy, Windy, the Christmas Pooh here. Uh, I'm going to be talking about <laughs> it's not real character or anyone you would know, because that's the first time they've appeared. Okay, Windy, the Christmas Pooh, welcomes you to this review of Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. All right, uh, this used to be one of my favorite movies, oh, if not my favorite movie at one point, okay, growing up. When I was a little kid, this movie... I found it hysterical, and I found it hysterical for a very, very long time. Uh, I watched this movie countless times as a kid. I loved the first movie, of course. Huge, massive Jim Carrey fan at the time. Um, I mean, the man could do no wrong for me at that point, and he didn't with this movie. Like, this movie really entertained me a lot, and I thought it was the perfect time to rewatch it. And it it's still, it holds up. I think it holds up. I think there's a there's some stuff about it that's a little scattered in terms of like the the kind of story of it and the interactions between some of the characters, but it's like it's so funny though. Like especially those early parts in the movie are just like it's kind of just non-stop funny. The first movie was kind of like that, but I feel like there was like a very sharp, you know, dip into like the story in that movie whereas here we take our time we start from such an epic scale. A movie begins and you're like, what am I watching? This can't be it. This is the wrong movie. Uh, and it's it's shot like cliffhanger. There's like helicopters. Like this freaking Jim Carrey like 10 miles away, like climbing a mountain, like actually climbing a mountain. And there's this incredible like helicopter shot that zooms into him. And you're like, wow, what's he going to say? It's going to be very deep. And it was just like uh, some dumb shit joke. And then you know, okay, this is definitely not Cliffhanger. Okay, this is a big, big joke. Anyway, he, Ace Ventura, the, sto the story begins, and Ace Ventura kind of gets an animal killed, all right? Uh, accidentally, of course. So he, uh, based, because of his greed as a pet detective, having to do all these jobs and stuff, uh, he couldn't handle the collateral damage. So he goes... To become a being of light in a Tibetan monastery. Okay? He becomes a monk. And that's funny in itself. And the thing that's funny to me is like, this dude cannot be like this naturally, right? Es Ventura at this point. There's no way this guy is not fucking around, right? Like, you see kind of glimpses of Jim Carrey having, like, his intelligence kind of coming through the character. And those little moments tell you something. They tell you that he's. This Ace Ventura guy is putting on a show for these dudes. But the rest of the time, he's probably just like a normal guy. He's a little eccentric that he does this. But this is this is like so strange. You're really watching like a cartoon character version of like what a real person would be. And sometimes you're like, wait, why is he fucking around right there? It's not funny. Like he is still fucking around at such weird times. Like he's in the monastery and he's just fucking around. And you're just like... I don't know if that guy's joking. He's got to be. But if he is joking, what is he doing there? Like, why does he live there? The only logical answer would be that he went to this monastery out of guilt. And then he saw how silly it was. And then he just started fucking around with these guys. And he loved it. And there's animals there. So he's like, this is based. I don't need to go anywhere. And uh, I think that's what actually happened. But in the movie, he's just unhinged right away. <laughs> there's just something deeply wrong with this guy and the moment that you realize there's something deeply wrong with Ace Ventura as a person is that when he's with uh the monkey and he's talking to the monkey like this blah, 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 you're like oh shit he acts like this in his downtime he acts like this at home this is weird this is actually very strange Ace Ventura is hired to recover the great white bat Shikaka uh, who has been stolen, kidnapped from a tribe, okay, in Africa. There was meant to be some kind of royal wedding between the Wachiti, Wachatis and the Wachutus, okay, another rival tribe. There was meant to be like a, you know, a marriage between the two tribes, right? And um, that cannot happen if Shikaka, who is like some kind of godly figure for these guys, uh, is not there. That would be like an insult and it would be war. Obviously, Ace Ventura has to 
avoid this bloodshed by finding Shikaka, who turns out to have been stolen by a bunch of poachers, Australian poachers, who were hired uh, by Simon Callow's bad guy. Okay, Simon Callow, who is hilarious in this movie and deserved a lot better than uh, what he got in terms of offered roles after this movie. I feel like this dude got typecast as like snooty English dude in like two movies, Street Fighter, which, yeah, it's Street Fighter, and um, and this movie, okay? And then you never saw him again. That was the dude who became huge. Uh, well, he didn't become huge, but like he made a big impact with four weddings and a funeral. But yeah, he deserved better, that guy, because he's so funny here. Like, he really is really funny. So you have Ace Ventura, who, you know, has kind of a connection with uh, the chief's daughter, okay? Who's the very pretty uh, Sophie Okonedo, who uh, I've... I knew from this movie and then from nothing else. And then she popped up again and all this stuff. I was like, oh, that's the girl from Amazon Tour <laughs> when nature calls. Hell yeah. Um, she's good. She's definitely good. She's got that innocence, but also a uh, rambunctious spirit that you need for the part. But it's kind of like, how old is that character? <laughs> like, you kind of wonder by the end of the film, you're like, I just hope you're not looking at something too dodgy. It's all already kind of dodgy what happened, but yeah anyway jim carrey is so freaking incredible in this movie like just like the way he contorts his body into ridiculous ways the the freaking numb arms and legs uh running scene the rhino scene a classic um the the scene where he goes to the wachuchu tribe and they uh they put him through all these like tests and events and stuff uh that is so funny as well uh, the Monopoly guy scene, the rewinding the speech scene, uh, it's just so good. And you know what? Like, the story is actually not bad in this movie. Like, it's all about these, like, uh, poachers and, and briberies and stuff and these red herrings. It's a good, like, it's a pretty good detective story, even though, obviously, you know that Simon Callow is the bad guy. I mean, look at him. I mean, this guy is just, this is the dodgiest guy. It would have been such a big twist if uh, the dude who's like Ace Ventura's friend in this movie, if that guy turned out to be the bad guy, that would have been a good twist. But obviously, Simon Callow, I think they should have done that. Honestly, they should have done that. It would have been so good. But it's it's not a thriller, you know. Like, if they'd done it as a thriller, then fine. But having, like, Ace's friend be the bad guy, I mean, I've, that's almost too good for this movie. This movie needs to be chill, okay? You can't you can't have anything too crazy there. Um, no, it works. It's a very funny movie, very cartoonish. You've got Jim Carrey singing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang for no reason because he's driving, <laughs> crashing cars left and right. Um, it's just, like, pissing off these, like, rich dudes and stuff. It's He is, like, the embodiment of just pure anarchy, you know? Like, this dude is just... If, you know, if he doesn't like you or he doesn't like something, he, he freaking w will let you know, but in the funniest possible way ever. Like that Monopoly guy, he literally assaulted that guy. <laughs> he assaulted that guy at a party and everybody was so stunned. Uh, but he kind of got away with it because he's just like dancing around, making him sound like the Monopoly guy. There, there's just something very empowering about Ace Ventura as a character, just like taking the piss of all these cliches. And all these like rich dudes and uptight society, that kind of stuff. There's just something anarchic and um, it's just really, you know, cool. Where like this guy is standing up for people, standing up for the little people, the littlest people, animals. He's got this humanitarian, uh, environmentalist kind of vibe to him. But because he's so insane and funny and just out of his mind, um, it doesn't come across as just kind of a preachy in any way so i feel like that's what we need okay if you want to save the environment uh, just have someone like ace ventura uh, do it for you this movie actually looks really good as well you know it's directed by steve odekirk who you may remember from the movie kung pao um that guy was a genius and again he deserved a lot better than he got like he started making these thumb movies and they were very good and very funny but he never went anywhere like i wish that steve odekirk could direct something like guardians of the galaxy you know like he would be freaking amazing and be in it as well imagine steve odekirk in the marvel universe oh my god you gotta inject some people like that into your shit steve odekirk does a really good job here like this is a really nice looking movie and, um, you know, the c comedy is on point. 
the comic timing is excellent, and there's so many memorable moments. I mean, for me, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, is actually, like, way better. Obviously way better than the first movie. Always has been. I do like the first movie. I do think it kind of falls apart by the end. Um, like, I don't think the whole Snowflake uh, storyline is very good. This movie has a much better story, and it's just so much funnier. Like, I'm sorry. Like, there's parts in the first movie that are kind of awkward, you know, where, like, he's, like, crying in the bathroom, like, after chewing all this gum. It's just kind of like, okay, are you okay, bro? <laughs> like, um, yeah, I don't know. There, there's a couple of bits in that movie that are just kind of, like, weird. But, like, it is funny as well, though. Like, there's so many funny moments. This movie's just always made me laugh the most, okay? And uh, I just think it's got some moments like that as well, but so minor near the beginning. Uh, but after that, I mean, it's a riot. It's vulgar, but it's funny as hell. You should check it out, okay? Um, the superior sequel, in my opinion. But I'm going to be re-watching the first movie because it's been a while. And uh, also, why not? Might as well get a get a review done of that one. I'm trying to go through a lot of my favorite movies this Christmas. So I will see you guys later. Take care. Uh, thanks for watching.